Ganondorf is Nintendo's best villain. I said it. I know Nintendo has a large list of iconic villains, and it will be hard to top this guy. Bitches. But trust me, no other villain in Nintendo tops the level of raw evil this man from the Gerudo Valley has unleashed. The guy has so many names. The Dark Lord, the Emperor of the Dark Realm, Gerudo King of Evil, Gerudo King of Thieves, the Great Evil King, Prince of Darkness, but the most powerful of them all is reserved for the best final boss the series has ever produced, the Demon King. Ganondorf has seen evolutions over the years, but in Tears of the Kingdom, his fight will no doubt get the emotions flowing from your veins and pierce straight through his evil heart with the Master Sword itself. This video is a time capsule into the feeling of defeating this boss for the very first time, and will be a collection of some story moments and reactions we can all internalize as we take on the Demon King, as well as who he was and where he came from. It's time we meet Ganondorf. Did you guys know that I'm Nintendo ready to take you down? Don't click the side of your screen. Wait, you haven't even heard of the button that prevents you from getting cease and desisted. This is the final boss, and only 3% of you guys have defeated this. So smack it with your massive master sword. Or don't, and let the Demon King win. Lose the house and the kids, Janet. Gosh. All right, resume. It's very clear that Ganondorf is to Link what the Joker is to Batman, the yin to the yang, the dark versus light Link. It's a simple theme that can be taken very far, and Nintendo has taken Ganondorf pretty far, with the most iconic Ganondorf until now, in my opinion, being an Ocarina of Time. He may not be your favorite Ganondorf, but he is the one that caused all of the wild timelines to split and the lore to really get in motion. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition happens outside of the timeline entirely, similarly to Breath of the Wild. It exists in all of the timelines because Ganondorf's soul gets split into multiple pieces that go into different timelines. This game had some crazy sh go down that I don't think Nintendo even cared to explain. But here's what the wiki says. Quote, during the events of the ending of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the timeline of the Zelda series was severed into three separate timelines. Thus, the Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time had three different future incarnations, each eventually meeting their end at the hands of different links at some point. While most incarnations of Ganondorf are the same individual, it was explained in the Hyrule Historia that the Ganondorf who appeared in the Four Swords Adventure was the reincarnation of the one that appeared in Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time. Okay, now that you know the explanations out of the way, you need to know that the Tears of the Kingdom Ganondorf doesn't play by the rules of any of that oh. and may just be a part of a whole new timeline, a parallel universe. Normally, you defeat Ganondorf and Ganon comes out of him like a Naruto spirit animal nine-tailed fox. No, Sasuke, don't be evil. But instead, Breath of the Wild had Calamity Ganon first, and years later, you resurrect Ganondorf. That ought to scare little Timothy. So who is Ganondorf? Well, Ganondorf is Ganon, and Ganon is another god named Demise. So Demise, lore time. Okay, I know it makes no sense, but over here we have Demise, who was explained in Skyward Sword. The first demon really is Demise. He rose from a chasm at the beginning of time, before your watch could watch and spin. What could spin was the seal that the goddess Hylia put Demise in but it could not last because of this guy, Girahim. Oh, you don't know Girahim? Everyone knows Girahim, right? So Girahim brought Demise back, but Link and Zelda sealed Demise back again, this time inside of the Master Sword. Then we get to the one that f everything up again. 
Ganondorf is the human form of Demise's latter form named Ganon. There is an implied curse as Ganondorf is the only man born in Gerudo's 100 year tradition. Oh yeah, one guy born every 100 years. A valley that is only women until he was born. He just gets to be the leader because he's a man. Objection! I guess it's implied Ganondorf has some horrible influences as a kid or he would be good. Twin Rova, the two witches, raised this guy to be evil. I still feel like he would have been evil because of prophecy, right? I, I don't know. Wait, I can't ask those questions because Ganondorf has caught the princess under my nose. Ganondorf has the piece of the Triforce, the one of power, and Zelda has another piece, the one of wisdom, while Link has the one of courage. So wait, we have the good versus evil theme, and now we have a classic love triangle right. Mmm, smoochy smoochy. Move out of the way, Zelda. Link has a demon king to save. In this game, Ganondorf gets all three pieces of the Triforce by the end and turns into... Ganon Pigman. The timeline gets complicated and split, but Ganondorf the Human has been in games like Wind Waker as a cartoon Ganondorf and Twilight Princess as Ganondorf with an hour-long tutorial and where the Gorons look like this. Okay, so now that you know all of that, Miyamoto is here to remind you that you aren't cooler than him. Here's a take de- no, no. Here's a time machine forward 10,000 years later. And let's just combine all the timelines into one. Ganon has now become a spirit of evil, the pure manifestation. Pretty much what he was before, but this time purple and black. Calamity Ganon. This one is much stronger and Breath of the Wild plays out. Okay, so now that you know that, Tears of the Kingdom tells you that Ganondorf is actually in the time of the original people of this Hyrule. And all that other no! you just learned is for nothing. And instead, it's implied that Calamity Ganon is a projection of Ganondorf's malice every 10,000 years in this world. It's explained through the Dragon Tears quest that Ganondorf was yet again the non-trustworthy king of Gerudo who kissed the ring of King Raru this time, but was going to betray him. Zelda got shot back in time to save Raru and his people, but lost the Dragon Tears stone after Raru's wife was tricked by a fake Zelda. So Ganondorf doesn't use the Triforce anymore, but instead he uses the stones to get more powerful. Okay, so then what about the Triforce on the Master Sword? Well, that part doesn't make sense either because Ganondorf takes damage from that weapon, and it's said that the sword is what defeats him even here. But I guess it's now powered by Zelda, who turned herself into a dragon. Oh yeah, that happens, and with her third of the Dragon Stones, you can defeat him. But does that also mean the other dragons roaming around Hyrule swallowed a stone too? Are there more stones? What the heck? Lore time over. In Tears of the Kingdom, Ganondorf is more prevalent via cutscenes than he normally is. And that's because Nintendo is preparing you for a true final battle with him. I always felt Ganondorf in the series was never really as pronounced. Every single game, it was like he was there for a cutscene or two, but you never really saw him throughout the whole experience. Then Tears of the Kingdom hits you with cutscenes that show how insanely evil this guy really is. There are the monsters Ganondorf rose from the ashes to reign again, and mostly all of them are from previous Zeldas, with the most pronounced being Goma in the Fire Temple, featured in seven 3D Zelda games, and now Kolgara, formerly known as Mulgara in Wind Waker. But instead of sand, this long boy is made of ice, the other king of the desert. One piece I always appreciated in Tears of the Kingdom was the known presence of Ganondorf everywhere, from the cutscenes, to the temples, the beginning, but especially this nightmare fuel. And that looks scary. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, after a million battles to get here, the player has to make some choices. 
you can either conquer all four regional phenomena and proceed through the spirit temple route to reach the final gauntlet of enemies before your pals take on the bosses again. Or you could do what Nintendo Unity did and go straight to the end and have to fight all of that for yourself. Or there's the Zuggle way of getting down here that speedrunners use by duping items and breaking the map underneath them to no clip into the final area. No matter what, you have to fight the army in some way before you can fight Ganondorf. And I love this. The scale is really apparent in the war on the man who stole Christmas. This world should be shrouded in darkness, not bathed in insufferable light. But the final battle might be the best in the entire series. Here we go. Dude. Here's boss fight number one. Ooh. How disappointing. This world should be shrouded in darkness, not bathed in insufferable light. All these weak, peace-loving cowards running rampant. It would have been more satisfying to overcome a worthy yo hey what <laughs> shots dude it's coming to life bro this is freaky this is real this is live Holy oh. Ganondorf. Holy Regardless, I will reshape Yo. this world as it was meant to be. Bro. Crush any opposition. I will rule. That is what a king must do. Oh my god. Demon King Ganondorf. The menace unleashed. of King's Revival. Such a hardcore line. And the birth of his new world. Dude, he looks sick as oh! I'm scared. This fight is unforgiving. Link with the Master Sword of Light against Ganondorf with the Death Katana of Gloom in a 1v1 on Rust for the century. <laughs> To be honest, this fight is such a step up in difficulty to the rest of the game that I'm happy to say Ganondorf is the finale fans deserve. He's more punishing than any side boss, and that includes the King Ghidorahs flying around, and is a much better step up from the Calamity Ganon. Plus, you have to fight him and not have the Divine Beast laser beam him down to half health like Calamity Ganon. You also run into him quick strike dodging you, so you need to be prepared to parry, and if you get hit, you don't recover your hearts without gloomy food ready to go. No Zonai is allowed, it's just a classic 1v1, and I love this. It is the redemption Nintendo needed for Calamity Ganon being an easier boss than some of the Phantoms and Lionels in Breath of the Wild. Right when you'd think it's over... Alright, transform. We know, we know. What a feeling. I had almost forgotten the thrill of battle. That feeling is blood surges in my veins. I am not even near the limits of my power. 
Dude, Ganondorf is such a just bad guy. He's just... Oh, shoot. All right. What's up, Demise look-alike? What the f***? Oh, oh sh It's so... This is how far is literally off the charts. <laughs> the Demon King parallels a shot that I know all too well in Elden Ring with a certain Horalu. But this phase is incredible, as you need to dodge phantoms while Ganondorf steps up his arsenal of weapons to accompany the variety of weapons in the game. With ranged attacks, heavy weapons, and his katana in hand, the Demon King is Nintendo's hardest boss in years. I seriously think that Nintendo could give FromSoft a run for their money in the difficulty department if they wanted to at times, if this boss alone was enough evidence of that. After a struggle of game over pianos and trying desperately to heal even though you didn't bring the food that you needed for this fight, the Demon King was slain. Alright, now what? Um, oh, he's not. He's not dead yet. What's he gonna do? No, he's gonna eat it. Oh, no way he's going to do that. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, he's becoming a dragon. Yo, the music, the dragon music. Oh my God. There is a new version of Ganon, or if you want to call him Dorf on the Zelda timeline. We have Dragon Ganondorf. This fight is purely cinematic and there's not much to talk about. Just enjoy some moments. The Demon King, Ganondorf, is Nintendo's best villain, and now you know why. No other villain in Nintendo tops the level of raw evil this man from Gerudo Valley has unleashed. And I can only hope that the movie about Zelda comes true, as the creator of Zelda has talked about time after time wanting a movie for their game. As this green evil is really Nintendo at their best. I know he's simple evil and not much is found past that, he doesn't have a crazy come up or reasoning. But every villain doesn't need that to be compelling, and Ganondorf embodies that. The guy may have so many names, but the one that is found in all of them is evil. And now that you have been through a journey of learning about and conquering evil, it's time to pass this on to the next video in the next timeline. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Mm.